Hello. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Mara? I'm going to spend the day with Jim Foster at his home in Boone County, the epicenter of mountaintop removal in West Virginia. Jim is a retired coal miner who has lived here all of his life. He and his wife, Jean, have a camp in Pocahontas County. We'll have lots to talk about. Maria Gunno lives just around the turn, so she's come to spend the day with us. I'm Jim Foster. I'm a 79-year-old. Born and raised here in West Virginia. Been here all my life. And uh, my mother and father originated here from the state of Tennessee back in the 20s. It's the time they moved here, they had four children, the four oldest. And after they moved to West Virginia, uh, I had a, a brother that's two years older than me, was born here in West Virginia, and then I was the last of six children. And I can well remember that we grew up in an old coal camp down at Van, and I well remember the, a big hollow that we always loved to fish and swim and play in. This hollow was about five miles long, and uh, there was deep holes of water in it that was over a small child's head, but was just right for good swimming and good fishing. People today, you can tell them about the fish that was in those hollows, and they, they, they won't believe you. They, they'll think you're lying. That uh, I, I can think back many, many times of all the enjoyment I had growing up and fishing in there. And at the time of that, there was thousands of acres of virgin forest in there. I, I can well remember when they started timbering that out. I was 13 years old. And there was one big poplar tree that I distinctly remember. It stood out among all of the trees that I ever saw in my life. It's more like uh, viewing a big redwood or something to me. Because back at that time, it's the largest tree that I ever remember growing in West Virginia. It was a big yellow poplar. The first log they cut out of it was an 18-foot log. I distinctly remember that. That one log, they took it out on a trailer by itself. And of all the areas that I ever hunted... That was my favorite place. I, I dearly loved it. One place that I always held dear to my heart was a cliff, a rock cliff that we would camp under. We called it the Camp Rock. It's ahead of a big hollow. It's called Moe's Hollow. And we would take the corner of a hatchet blade and chisel our initials into the sandstone rock in the, under that cliff. And you get to studying and thinking back, and I remember a lot of the initials. My older brother, which is dead and gone now, his initials, I, they stood out. I could always remember the CEF. Of course, mine was JDF, and they was definitely there. Lots of other boys. But it's been several years since I've been back to visit the old Camp Rock, in which today, I suppose, is probably gone because they've started their mountaintop removal in that area. The strip mines are take off the top of these mountains Leave scars that won't heal And make God turn his eyes They level the hilltops That once reached toward heaven A mighty green skyline Now humble in size But you can thank memories uh, on Casey Mountain, there was a little fire tower and a little cabin where the ranger, the forest ranger, would stay there during the fire season. We'd even climb the fire tower and go up in it, and you could see for miles and miles. And I think back about stuff like that, and uh, some people it may not mean a lot, but to me, that's, that's what I call a person's reason for living in the country because you'd be out where God created the nature that you can really be peaceful and enjoy and everything. But there's been so much of it destroyed now. The place where the far tire and the cabin was out, it's all gone. There's not even, the mountain's gone. They go through and uh, strip and tear it up like that, and then come through and fly with the helicopter, drop a handful of seed here and there, and they say it's all been reclaimed. And they brag about the flat lands they've developed for people to build on but I wouldn't I wouldn't be guilty of trying to 
put a dog house on a place like that because it would be mistreating an animal to put them in a place like that, let alone for people to try to live there. And uh, they cry jobs. If they want to talk about jobs, I, I, I'll go right along with them. Hey, 30 years ago, there was 125,000 coal miners from West Virginia working. And I said, uh, today there's 15,000. That should tell the leadership of our state and our government a few things. If they would stop mountaintop removal today, within 30 days, they would be the biggest demand for manpower that's ever been known in the history of the state of West Virginia because they have to have this coal. And I say they can mine it without destroying the environment like they're doing. And if they cannot mine it without destroying the environment, do away with it completely. I don't think they should allow it at all because the, the environment is destroyed forever. When they leave, the, the hardwood forest that they're destroying can never be replaced. Now dynamite blasts off the top of these mountains And big machines carve out the coal from the seams They flatten the hills and fill up the valleys and turn into black pools got pure mountain streams that's one of my biggest dreads sludge dams they some national guard men came through the community here and told all of us to get all of our prescription medicines and what have you and get them in our vehicle and get ready to leave in a moment's notice to get on higher ground because they've got a sludge dam above us here that we're afraid it's going to collapse, and if it does, it is really going to do a lot of damage. I have many, many nights stayed up overnight and take a spotlight out here and monitor the river overnight, scared to death. You, you can't lay down at night and go to sleep because if you do, you may never wake up. A lot of people, the politicians, if they had to live in these conditions and see what the, the ordinary citizen has to live and put up with, you're in the Areas where this mountaintop removal and all these sludge dams is at. If they had to live here for a while, they'd change their minds and their notions about how people have to live. Mm -hmm.